Do you need a landscaping job tackled? Keen Landscaping is a family owned and operated full service landscaping company based in Dallas, Texas. Anything from property restoration and tree pruning or removal to landscape design, construction and installation, Keen covers it all. They're also the official landscape company of the Dallas Stars. Learn more at KeenLandscaping.com. Again, that's K-E-A-N-E Landscaping.com. Welcome to Parker's MMA Show. If you want to learn about all things going down in the fight world, you've come to the right place. Each episode, your host, Parker Keen, will take a deeper dive into the always entertaining world of sanctioned fist fighting. Now here's your host, Parker Keen. All right, Parker's MMA Show, episode 64, another uh, very special interview here. Uh, We have Charles the Bodyguard Williams. He's coming off a humongous first-round knockout at XKO 49. He's one of the hottest lightweights in Texas at the moment. And, Charles, we are thrilled to have you on the podcast. So thank you for being here. Yes, sir. I appreciate you guys bringing me on. All right, Charles, so let's get right into it. Um, Tell us a little bit about where you're from, kind of your your childhood growing up. Um, we, you know, we ask people kind of what sports you played growing up, that kind of stuff. Okay, well, uh, I'm from Lancaster, Texas. It's a small town right outside of Dallas. Uh, it's a, uh, I wouldn't say it's 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 a suburb area. I wouldn't say it's one of the best of areas, but it's a good area to have grown up in. You know, it was, uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, the sports that I played growing up, I was really more of a football kind of guy, even though I was a jack of all trades. I played pretty much everything. So I ran track, played football, played basketball, played baseball. I, if they had to let me play hockey, I would have played that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I just kind of was a jack of all trades when it came to sports. All right, good. So um, we get that a lot from, you know, a lot of fighters. But uh, so how did you make your transition into fighting? When did you get into training and kind of when did you get interested in fighting? Well, I uh, played a little bit of semi-pro football, caught a bit of an injury. I was playing running back for a semi-pro team out in uh, Hempstead, Texas, and I wound up catching a, an injury. And it, it wasn't a super bad injury, but it was enough that took me out for the season, and I just kind of got tired of it. So I decided, you know, I'm going to do something where I have a bit more control, you know. And I started training. A friend of mine took me out to a gym out in uh, uh, Cypress, Texas. It's a little town outside of Houston. And I know I'm always in these small towns. Like I'm <laughs> so <laughs> I guess I'm just a, a small town kind of guy. I don't know. But uh yeah, he took me to a little small town uh, uh named Cypress and we went to a gym out there and I met this guy named Rambo and that was the first time I had ever been introduced to MMA. And from there it just kinda caught fire in my brain, it was all I thought about. So, you know, I just studied and studied and studied and trained until, you know, here we are. So before that meeting with Rambo, did you have any, did you watch fighting? Were you aware of UFC or MMA or, you know, Chuck Liddell, Tito Ortiz, anyone like that? Yes, my brother had actually shown me uh, uh, this tape and it had a lot of those guys on there. Yeah. And Chuck Liddell, he was actually, he was one of the, I grew up watching, he's one of my favorites to watch. Uh, I kind of, I kind of like to say I like to pattern my style after uh, uh uh, Rampage though, Quentin Rampage Jackson. He probably was my sure. favorite back then. Currently, now I I I I'll wait for for that one. <laughs> but uh, I like to say I, I pattern my style like a Rampage uh, when I was younger, coming up when I first started out. I was taking everybody for a ride. Everybody was getting slammed. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, uh, all right, let's talk a little bit about once you made the. I, I saw on, I think, Tapology, you had a pretty extensive amateur career. But once you made the move to being a professional fighter, what are some of the biggest perks of being a professional fighter? And what are some of the biggest downsides of being a professional fighter and living that life? Well, I'd say the biggest perks of being able to say you're a professional or being a professional fighter is pretty much at this level is being able to say you're a professional fighter. You <laughs> know, uh, as a, as that's that and the recognition, like the, the the people that you come into contact with, they garner a massive amount of respect for you. You know, so they they, they treat you a little bit differently. It's, it's it's I don't know. It's like I'm not Kobe, but you know, I'm not I'm not LeBron or anybody like that. But you know, I'm uh, 
I'm, I'm on the practice squad, so to speak. You know, <laughs> it's not it's not until you make it to the to the UFC. You know, <laughs> and it's like okay, then you can be be become a star player. You know. So. Yeah. All right, Billy. So obviously, Charles, you're coming off a huge knockout. You know, it's it's actually the first knockout of your professional career, if I'm correct. Um, but I don't think that that's who you are as a fighter, right? I've seen a lot of your highlights. I think you're you're not you're not your typical running back who's just going to come out try and find the the place where you can explode and knock the guy out. So. How would you describe your fighting style? How do you view yourself stylistically as a fighter? Well, I would call myself an opportunistic heavy puncher. Mm -hmm. Uh, I pretty much like to take what they give me. I'm very patient. So uh, I'm not really one of the the guys that like to come out there and just go balls to the walls in the first couple minutes. No, I like to pace myself. If you uh if you actually take a look at topology, you'll see that every fight that I've ever lost, I've never been knocked out. You know, all of the fights that I lose, we're going the distance, and I'm going to test you. I'm going to test you throughout that whole 15 minutes. I'm going to hit you hard. You're not going to hit me because nobody's going to hit me if I don't want to. It just it just it is what it is. You know, when I step into that cage, I'm in control. You know, you're not doing anything to me that I don't want to happen to me, and everything that I want to happen, I'm going to make it happen. Execution is the name of the game, but that's pretty much how I'm attacking it this year. So uh, obviously, you've talked about you know younger days. You're modeling after Rampage Jackson, right? Who we all know, big time action fighter. Um, and now you're talking about when you go in there, it's about control. It's about the ability to go to go the distance, drag drag your opponent into the deeper water, so to speak. What is that like mentally when you're in the cage? When you're when you're trying to stay calm and patient in the midst of chaos, how do you accomplish that? Well, it, it becomes more of a uh, uh, symbiotic relationship. When I'm in that cage, I can't have a good performance if I can't bring a good performance out of my opponent. You know, uh, We kind of need each other, so to speak, in that cage. So I'm feeding off his energy as he's feeding off of mine. You know. Uh, Pretty much have to, uh, pretty much have to take control of the dance. It's like a dance. It really is like a dance. Like when you're leading for the, those dancing, it really is like a dance. Like I, I, that's pretty much the only way I can explain it. You know, <clears throat> but like I say, I, I I normally like to be the one that's in the lead. And from here on out, I I, I don't know if anybody heard me, but I'm gonna say it again for you guys. Uh, for the rest of 2021, this is my year. I'm coming for it. I'm not waiting. I'm coming to take it. I don't care who's in my way. If you're in my way, if now if you're thinking about getting in my way, you might want to get out because this year is my year. Hell yeah. So when you talk about leading that dance, Charles, and you you think that way, right? Like you're you're in a in a state now where not only is this your year, but you know you have a plan to execute, right? It's not just, you know, throw an effort out into the wind, right? Has right. that changed? Has that ability to handle that chaos, the ability to be patient, to know that you have to lead that dance, has that changed over the course of your career? Because as someone who's had, you know, almost, what, a dozen cage fights between your amateur and professional career, um, I, I'm just wondering, has that evolved? Were you at one point saying, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to knock this guy out as quick as possible? Or have you always had that patience and that ability to take a step back and say, no, this is my best avenue to win in this particular contest? Well, yes, it definitely has evolved. And I would have to attribute that uh, that change, that major change to uh, my head coach, my current head coach, Derwin Lamb. Uh, he uh, was pretty much the one that gave me that, that discipline, that level of control. Uh, it wasn't until I got into contact with him that I learned how to actually pay attention to my coach's voice. I learned how to actually game plan. At first, I was going out there like a lone gunman. You know, I was just, what, what, what does Israel Adesanya say? Throwing and hoping? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Throwing and hoping. You know, I wasn't aiming and firing. I was just throwing and hoping out there. You know, and it was working for me, at, you know, for a while. But that's at the lower levels at the Ambies. You know, that works for you. You know, but at this pro level, you, you have to learn to game plan. You have to learn to listen to your coach. You have to learn to stay patient. You have to make sure that you do what you need to do to stay disciplined and keep your wind on point. Because if you don't, then you're just going to get eaten alive by another guy like me. Let's talk a little bit about Coach Lamb and your work with him. How long have you been with him? 
I've been with Coach Lamb for about since 2018. Remember Coach Lamb for since yeah since 2018. I've been back uh, uh, been with him, and we pretty much found a recipe that we're comfortable with, and you know we feel like we're ready to make a run. So what does that training schedule look like? Like, what do you guys focus on day to day? Are you guys mixing disciplines in a single day? Is it you know Monday's boxing, Tuesday's jujitsu? How does that work with with your training schedule? Well. I really don't want to give up the secret sauce. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I got to ask, though. I'm not doing my job if I don't ask, Charles. I hear that. I hear that. But I will I will say this. Uh, when it comes to that, that, that training regimen, we do have – we don't really do the mixing of uh, – uh, the mixing of disciplines thing. I, I It's – to me, I feel like it's a bit too much to take on at once. You know, we'll, we'll – we'll, have our training sessions, then we'll take a break and then we'll train again. And then we'll, we'll do what we call like a mental walkthrough in which we, because really the mental part is the most important part. You know, uh, uh, coach D used to always, well, he always tells us if we, if we can't do it slow, you're not going to be able to do it fast. So don't try. So that's, you know, that, 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 that's where the mental walkthrough, the explaining of the actual actions comes into play. And I don't know if anybody knows this, but, uh, uh, we've, we've uh, actually picked up, uh, Coach James Vick, the execution. Oh, nice! He's in my corner right now as well. That's awesome. It's it's a welcome addition too because he's he's shown me some things that you know I, that's made me a bit more confident. You know, you got a guy that you know hits the top fifteen, comes and decides he wants to coach you. You know, yeah, <laughs> that's gonna up your confidence a little. Got to take it absolutely. And I'm gonna I'm gonna steal Parker's thunder <clears throat> before I let him take over here. But a question that he always loves is. How does recovery focus it or factor into your training regimen? Like, what do you do for recovery? You know, how are you kind of dealing with the brutality that comes with training in this sport day in and day out? You know what? I have a, 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 a almost like a like a, a nurse that kind of handles that thing. So when it comes to recovery and stuff, like I, I have a special person that that kind of helps me with that, and she's been with me the whole through the whole time. You know, but uh. She's she's a great friend of mine. Like she's always been around. She's always there for me. So when I when I deal with injuries and stuff like that, like she's always there to help me with that. So the cryo treatments and stuff like that, she'll she'll take care of that. Uh, uh, if I have like let's say I have some heavy trauma to my leg or something like that, then she'll take me to get a massage or she'll buy a massage hammer or something like that, you know. But our favorite thing, my favorite thing for her to use is the ice. You know, like that, that. There's nothing that beat that ice. Like I, I don't care what it is. The older I get, for some reason, the I guess the more welcoming my body is to it. Is I don't know. But you can't beat ice and heat. You just can't. <laughs> Go ahead, Park. So let me uh, let me dig in a little further on the James Vick situation. Obviously, James is someone that's been in there with Justin Gaethje, Paul Felder, Dan Hooker, some of the best 155ers on the planet. Uh, what does it mean to you to have a guy like that in your corner now? And what do you think? <laughs> It means for your career moving forward. Well, I think I think I'll uh, I'll get the chance to uh, learn from some of the things that he has to teach me. I, I think that there will be some tendencies that he'll be able to open my eyes to because these are some of the same guys that I could wind up facing. Yeah, one hundred percent. You know, I'm like, how I perform in these. Yeah, you know, how I perform in this this next coming year. I could be find myself standing in front of some of those guys. You know, so uh, I think that his his sacrifice in gaining that knowledge and his willingness to share it with me, I think it <laughs> because it's one thing to walk into a situation thinking, you know, something. But it's a whole total different situation when you're actually talking to a guy who's been there. It's like not only have I been there, but hey, let's watch this tape. <laughs> let's watch this tape where, where, you know, where I didn't get it right. Or let's watch this tape. In his case, let's watch this tape where I did get it right, you know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and and a lot of people, I was gonna say, a lot, a lot of people don't know that uh, we, we, you know, we we have a lot of a lot of people that that have you know passed through that gym. So it's a lot of guys that I know that's in this Dallas area, in the Dallas Fort Worth area, that you know I talk to on a daily basis. So. <laughs> well, awesome. So this is a question I like to ask a lot of guys, but um, in your mind, what does it mean to be a martial artist? Okay, so when it comes to being a martial artist, uh, I have to break it down. 
I like to break it down. I like to, 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 to take the words and separate them and then define them for yourself. You know, well, I define them using the actual terminology first off. Now, that's a question that I, 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 I've heard be asked a lot. And uh, I kind of already had an answer for it. So when I think about uh, what what it means to be martial, we talk about something. Uh, we talk about defining martial. We talk about something that that is a. Uh, uh, I don't know if I want to say this on your format, but it's a more serious type of format. So when we talk about it's very serious. It, it's actually very closely aligned with death. You know. So we talk about something being martial, like like martial law, or like you know like. Stuff like that, where it's absolutely serious, completely and totally, you have no control over it. When it comes your way, you have to deal with it, you know. And then we talk about being an artist, okay? Well, an artist is someone who performs and shows a specific talent with their own uh, pizzazz or flair to it. So when I take those two and I smash them together. I, I have a person who, uh, <laughs> who pretty much <sighs> takes that seriousness of destruction and adds his own flair to it and performs to the masses. So that to me is what it means to be a martial artist, somebody who is able to uh, take that. <laughs> and I, I'm trying not to say the wrong thing because I know. Let it rip. Hey, let it rip. You're good. <laughs> hey, You're let all it good. Rip, man. Let it rip. <laughs> okay. But, uh, but somebody who's well versed in, 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 in death and destruction and, and allowing them to paint their picture, you know. Uh, that that's pretty much what we do when we talk about martial arts. Like the, those arts, the ancient arts were designed to actually take people apart. Like this, this was designed to defend countries and small towns, and you know, like that's what martial arts was designed for. Like that's where it came from. We just took it and put a sports spin on it, which is beautiful because it gives us an opportunity to go home to our families afterwards. So, <laughs> so I appreciate that. You know, uh, and that's a beautiful it. answer okay. there. <laughs> uh, I got I got one more for you, and then Billy's got a couple. Um, Charles, what what other hobbies or passions do you have outside of fighting? And what do you think you'll do, you know, after your fighting career? Do you, have you thought about that, or are you just solely focused on fighting? Well, I have quite a few hobbies that I uh, am taking part in right now at the current moment. Uh, I actually have fallen in love with video editing and uh, shooting. So I'm just like kind of this big camera head and didn't know about it. You know, I kind of fell into it. It was like really silly kind of way, kind of the way it happened. You know, I, last year when the, the pandemic hit, I kind of just didn't have anything to do. So I was bored. So I was training, but the gyms had closed down. So there was no way for me to train and I was absolutely losing my mind. Like I'm talking about like, like it was crazy. Like I was snapping on people and, because I didn't have the opportunity to go train. So what wound up happening is, is my brother runs this media company, right? Runs this media company called Purple Horizon Media. And they do a lot of shoots and photo shoots and stuff like that. It's like videography and photography mixed into one to produce media content over the internet. So I started working for him and, uh, I come to find out that I had a pretty good knack for it. Like I was actually really good at it. So uh, I wound up branching off and starting this deal called Bodyguard TV. Uh, uh, and now I'm kind of having a plan with that in between fights because you know it just it was it was like it was like a, a very special gift my brother gave to me. You know because I knew nothing about any of this stuff. I mean he he shot my promos and stuff when I first started out, but. You know, I didn't know what all it took to do it. And it actually makes me appreciate him much more knowing <laughs> for sure. exactly what he did to make that happen. Like it just, <laughs> yeah, it was, it's just crazy. But it's like awesome. a lot of people don't understand that, you know, sometimes the guy behind the camera mm. is just as important as the guy in front of the camera. <laughs> you just, Absolutely. You, you only see the name and the credit, though, for the guy behind the camera. But he, hey, I'm going to tell you right now. You don't even get to see the other guy without that guy. So it just. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, that, that's pretty much why I think my career will be going. I probably will uh, hold on to my little media company that I created. And uh, uh, hopefully, me and my brother can take this thing to the top. Who knows? You might see a Purple Horizon and Bodyguard TV movie film production coming soon. We don't know. You know, we don't know. But right now, right now, we're going to get these wins and keep. 
We're going to keep making them focus on what we're about to do to them because we're never worried about what they're about to do to us. No. And that's Coach D saying. Make them worry about what you're about to do to them. Never think about what they're about to do to you. Got to strike with bad intentions. Got to. And for those who don't know, we are a striking school, so we <laughs> spend most of our time striking. Like before you fight us, understand that we're a striking school. Like that's what we don't. <laughs> we're and that's in all formats, everywhere on the ground. We're still gonna strike you. Standing up, we're really gonna strike you. In the clinch, eh, it's really gonna hurt because we're gonna use all kind of stuff, like elbows, knees, stuff like that. That's kind of who we are. Just it is what it is. Hell yeah! <laughs> all right, Billy. All right, Charles. So, you know, you've talked a lot about 2021 is your year. You've had two fights in XKO, your past two fights, but you've had fights in LFA. You've had fights in Bellator. Is this a situation where your goal is, I'm going to get my next couple fights in LFA. I'm going to get that late notice call, go to the UFC or go to the contender series. Or is this, I'm going to go wherever, who's whoever's going to pay for the bodyguard, right? You know, whoever, whoever's going to pay me, whether it's Bellator, whether it's one of these overseas promotions, that's my goal. Make the most money, feed my family. Uh, wh- what do you think about that? Is it the UFC route for sure, or is it the you know whoever's cutting the biggest check? Well, at the moment, I would love to fight for the UFC. I would. I've lo- I would love to fight for the UFC. You know, uh, my my people have a rapport with Bellator. I I, I, I like to fight it for them. But at this at this point, I, I want I'm. I want the legacy, man. I want the legacy. I want the opportunity to be able to say I fought some of the best fighters. Uh, you know, the guys that I grew up watching. You know, I, 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 I want to step in that cage and fight with those guys. You know, because I hate to say it, but, you know, the the, the Dustin Portiers and, the, and the, uh, the, the one that I'm really, really, really happy for is uh, the chance to uh, have an opportunity to be in the same cage with Michael Chandler. I've been watching that guy forever. You know what I'm saying I've been watching him forever. Like, I it's just phenomenal to see his his last win. You know, it, it was phenomenal because we had all been saying this for like a long time. Like, you know, I'm I'm a fighter, yes, but first I'm I, I was a fan, so I'm a fan first and then a fighter second. You know, so that's the way I, I look at it from my perspective. But uh, yeah, I'm happy to see Michael Chandler get the chance to get in there and do his thing. I'm happy to, you know, happy to hopefully get an opportunity to put myself in a position to be able to share the cage with this man. Because I grew up looking up to this guy. You know what I'm saying? It's like he would be like fighting him or Conor McGregor or something like that would probably be like my my fighting Anderson Silva for Israel Adesanya. You know what I'm saying? Like. That, that, that's like a legendary bout that you would like always think of. Like when I started out in my infancy of these things, these guys were already masters. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I'm starting out as a kid, basically. And if I get the chance to, you know, get in there, then it just it is what it is. I'm make it happen. And I know those are some big names, and it's kind of early right now, but I'm going for the gusto, man. I really don't have a whole lot of time. I'm 34 years old, and it's time to put, you know, just mash the gas man we mashing the gas let's go so a guy that you a guy that you have fought uh who did make it to the ufc austin lingo you've you i was actually in the building when you fought him in the lfa uh for the for the time when you fought when you were pros you beat him as an amateur is that something that you think about even now early on in your career that you want trilogy but he got the best of you the last time or is he just another guy and you're like whatever i don't really care about that i don't take it personally at all well you know austin lingo's a great guy you know he's a great 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 guy you know, i still talk to him some to, you know to, to this day but uh he didn't win that fight <laughs> he, he didn't win that fight uh, i would i would be interested in a trilogy but we would have to do it at 55 i've tried to come down to 45 twice i just can't get down there but i know he can make 55. <laughs> I know that. So if we were to do a trilogy, it would have to be a 55. Yeah. Uh, like I say, he's a great guy. At, at the end of the day, it's it's a fight. You know, it's a fight. We know we know what we signed up for. It, just, it is what it is. I'm not taking nothing away from him. I think he's a spectacular guy. I think he's a spectacular fighter. You know, but I I I, I would like to see that happen. I would like to see that happen with with UFC back and behind it. I would like to see you know uh, uh, ESPN tell the story. But in order for that to happen. I have to perform well. Yeah. I got to perform well. I have to get there. I have to make that make sense. So, 
Would you only want that fight in the UFC, or would you be happy if you know if Austin, you know, something happened and he was in the LFA or whatever? Um, or do you really just feel like if that trilogy is going to happen, it's got to be with those three letters behind it? Ah, uh, you know, at this point, I would say I would want to do it at the highest level. But you know, the the powers that be, wherever they would want it, that's where it would happen. And, you know, you and I both know that wherever we got the offer, that's where sure. it would happen, you know. <laughs> sure. Whoever, you know, whoever steps out and says, hey, I want to see this, then that's where it's going. You know, the first time they threw beer at me, you know, the, <laughs> the yeah. first time, the first time they threw beer at me, it happened in 18 seconds and then they threw beer at me, you know. And then the, the second time we went the distance and uh, it gained a lot of respect. First of all, he gained a lot of my respect uh, uh, stepping up and saying, hey, I want that fight again. Most people don't do that. Most people, most, most people don't say they would fight me again. Like that's not because because I'm a I'm a heavy puncher, a very heavy puncher. So it just it is what it is. I hit people hard. That's my specialty. So yeah. You know. Well, Charles, we we got one last segment that we do with a lot of our guests. It's it's kind of a rapid fire segment. We typically get some pretty funny responses. So you know, try and just think of the first thing that comes to mind. This episode's going to come out around Valentine's Day. So we got kind of a Valentine's Day theme to it. Um, so, you know, it's it's silly and it's funny. So just, you know, tell me the first thing that comes to mind. Are you ready for the rapid fire round? Yes, sir. Let's go. All right. Your favorite candy, chocolate or sweet? Chocolate. You like chocolate? Anything specific? Snickers. Snickers. All right. Favorite rom-com or romantic movie? Uh, I'm going to have to go romantic movie, and that's going to be uh, The Notebook. The Notebook. There All we right. go. Charles, where was your first kiss? My first kiss was actually at a school dance. At a school dance. How old were you? I was about, this was about what, 11, 12? Good. I'm glad you didn't say 27. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was only kissing back then. Though. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I had some respect for myself. I don't know what everybody else was doing. <laughs> what is something other than fighting that you truly love? Uh, something that I love. Other than fighting that I truly love. I have to say security and investigations. Protection. I love it. Like, that's that's my calling. You know? Even though, even though it's kind of cheating because it does kind of encompass fighting as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. And then the last question, Charles, the people want to know, do you have a Valentine this year? Do I have a Valentine this year? Uh, you know, I don't think so at the current moment. I don't think I have a Valentine right now. I don't so think fair, to, fair to tell the ladies, all three of them that listen to this podcast, two of them are <laughs> me and Parker's mothers. Uh, you know how MMA goes, Charles, but Charles Williams is single, ladies. The, ba- the bodyguard is on the market. Yes, sir. It's true. All right, Charles. Well, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for coming on the podcast. Uh, Parker's MMA show. Uh, like, rate, subscribe. Give us all the reviews, all the love for for our guy, the bodyguard. Charles, do you have any shout outs? Any, anyone you want to give thanks to? Uh, anything you want to say before we get out of here? Yeah. Uh, first and foremost, I got to shout out Coach D, Coach Derwin Lamb. He, you know, without him, I, I don't. I don't think I would have be sitting right here. I don't think I would have gotten the opportunity to do it. I got to shout out my brother Stephen Williams, who's manager. Uh, I, I list the fighters, guys that who've given me an opportunity to step in a cage with him. Uh, 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 guys who you know, guys who trained with me all the time, like the Kevin Hollins and the, the Jeff Neals and the, uh, the Miles Johns and. The Shauna Dobsons and uh, um, you know it's quite quite a quite a big name you know saying the, the even the Damon Jacksons you know saying the guys that you know when I go visit over in Florida the Rashad Coulter all those guys man uh, a few more coaches Coach Nelson and I appreciate everything that you've shown me uh, Coach Derek uh, Perkins man I appreciate you you know like it's, it's 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 quite a few people that you know you just see us step in the cage but it's a lot of people behind us a lot of people behind us. Even, even you know, from those sponsors all the way down to our parents, you know, it's just, I, I appreciate all of them. I really do. All right, Charles, we appreciate you. We'll stay in touch and let us know before your next fight. We'll get you back on and uh, promo that fight. 
All right, all right. 21, you're the bodyguard. Let's go. Sure, all right, team. brother. Have a good night, okay? See ya. You have a Sir, good night. as well. All Thank right, you guys for having me. Texas Trees is the premier tree care company in the DFW area. Whether you need basic maintenance or specialized services, when it comes to trees, we've got you covered. Pruning, chipping, bracing, and cabling, even root barriers and disease control, we do it all. And if you aren't sure what you need, we have certified arborists on staff to point you in the right direction. Visit us at NorthTexasTrees.net. That's NorthTexasTrees.net. Thanks for listening to Parker's MMA Show. Take a moment to rate and review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts and visit Parker Keen's MMA show.podbean.com for additional information on Parker and to stay up to date on the latest drama in the fight world. For more information and important links about today's episode, check out the show notes.